Clip Devils, Jade all back with another goddamn fucking video. And today's video, gonna be doing a little bit of a fucking recommendation for you. People seem to like the recommendation videos, so I got just one for you today. Then after that, I'll go uh, probably do, knock out some questions. I pulled up the next video of mine already on my phone, uh, found out just which, which video I leave off on. So I found it already, and we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, I really want to do this recommendation because I just thought about it. I just went to the show last night, which was the band uh, Spider. And so it's spelled S-P-I-T-E-R. It looks like spitter, spider, but it's uh, pronounced spider. And I uh, confirmed that with fucking uh, Dick as well. Um, so, yeah. But anyways, uh, Hell's Headbangers put out their uh, C well, we did CD cassette so far. And then vinyl is at press. And as you guys know, the fucking vinyl takes fucking forever. So, anyways, um, yeah, I just thought about it. Even at the show last night, I thought they were even better live than on album. But the fucking album's great. So I brought a CD here to show you guys. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is, other than recommendations, is because, like, I just have a very strong fucking feeling on it that this is the uh, fucking a band in the making, if that makes any fucking sense. Kind of like, it reminds me of, like, I'm kind of, like, taking notes now, so I kind of have it committed to memory in case they blow up to, like, the size of, like, Midnight or Speed Wolf. Or at the very least, I think, like, a shitfucker size. Because Shitbucker, um, they're not like a huge or anything, but they're definitely a very, very steady selling band for Hell's Headbangers, a band that we had to repress like the vinyls and shit like that. Uh, people asking for them when they were sold out. The band that definitely has a man. Uh, definitely didn't sell as well as Midnight. And uh, Speed Wolf, Speed Wolf was a band like I remember when we signed it, it was kind of like, who's this band? <coughs> and personally, I was actually never big on them. I thought I was like, eh, it's okay. It's kind of like just, you know, punkish fucking Motorhead. I was like, yeah, it's whatever. But, um, we, you know, we signed and we put it out and it initially started off. He has a steady move, but like within like one year, like it, it, it was, it, I don't want to say blow up because he didn't get to like midnight size, but very, very well. Like I, we repressed the vinyl fucking shit. I don't even know how many times it got repressed. Uh, and then the CD was repressed several times as well. Just kept repressed, repressed, repressed because it'd sell out in a few months and people were still asking. And the only reason we never repressed it in uh, recent times is because, uh, the band broke up, and the only guy I met, a really, really friendly, cool guy, was Reed. And I think that the him and the other members had a falling out. Like, the other members didn't want to carry on, but Reed did. But the other guys are, well, that's fucking bullshit, that I want money. S something along those lines. I could be wrong on that. I remember when Chase asked to redo it, it was just arguments. Kind of, oh, just, I think Reed just said, just, uh, just, just scrap it, man. Like, uh, they, they just can't come to an agreement. To my recollection, uh, I could be off base on that, but I think it was at least something along those lines. So that's why cause some people have actually have asked me uh, in, in recent times too. Yeah, why, why don't you uh, repress the Speed Wolf? And that's the fucking reason. Anyways, I have a, I have a feeling that uh, Spider is going to be kind of entering like that category, kind of like move over midnight. You know what I mean? The next fucking uh, big thing. Who knows? Maybe they'll leave us for Metal Blade too, right? <laughs> Just fucking busting balls. But anyways, um, hey, you got the fucking shirt. Bought it at the fucking show last night. They had one two X left just for fucking J Dog. So I even picked up a goddamn shirt. Wasn't no fucking freebie either. I pay. I pay like everybody else. Uh, but here's the CD. And even another thing is too, because uh, like I really like about it, is their fucking image is badass as a motherfucker. So it's just them on the cover. So yeah, I got to talk to uh, Chase and shit like that to tell him to talk to Dick about us getting uh, shirts, you know, album shirts of the, you know, cover up full color album shirts. And so like I said, we have the, the CDs now, the cassettes are in. And then the vinyl was submitted, and like I told you guys several times, it's like a 12-month turnaround fucking time. So, yeah, we won't even have them this year, because uh, I don't know what month it was submitted. Uh, but I know Chase said it is at press, so, I don't know, sometime in 2023, but the vinyl should look very fucking sweet. Show you a little bit inside, just the lyrics and shit. But like I said, really, really cool fucking image. And, um, yeah, this... So as some of you guys may or may not know, uh, the, so the main guy, yeah, is uh, is Dick. He's called fucking uh, Richard Spider on this uh, on the album. Does guitar and vocals. He did also um, he's in Shitfucker, and also he did uh, Nuke, which I thought Nuke was great too. That album, and it just it seems like Nuke's pretty much done. I mean, they, they get an official statement that they are, but it's, it's the vibe I'm getting based on off conversations is just what I'm seeing. And anyways, uh. So, uh, yeah, he did both those. And I thought, yeah, I thought Nuke was great, too. But I would have to say out of all the stuff uh, so far that uh, that he's done, I, th I think this, this spider is the fucking best. But I, yeah, for sure. And it's like, uh, I think it's going to like, another reason I kind of think that it's going to like be kind of like the next fucking 
hot band in a sense is my prediction. I could be totally fucking wrong. It'd be like fucking never goes anywhere, right? Can't, can't even move a thousand CDs. And you, two years from now, you see them in three, three, three. It could be something along those lines. I could be dead ass wrong. It's just a prediction. I just gut feeling. So just got giving you devils the heads up in case you're like, oh fuck, I want to be part of the cool club. I wanna, I wanna get to know them before they become popular and big. You know what I mean? Kind of like I remember when Toxic Holocaust, same thing. When Evil Never Dies came out, uh, Craig knew about them already, Reaper, and uh, he was writing Joel before the album even came out. And then, so I remember him being a fan of them and talking about them. And I don't even think I heard him at that point. And then when I first heard him, is it was I was at Don at the Dead's house, and he bought a Die Hard from Nuclear War Now, the Die Hard version of the LP when that came out in like 2003. And he's like, this is the fucking greatest thing in the last 20 years to come out. And, um, and then right around then hell's got their copies. And I put out, Oh, this is fucking great. So they were already kind of like someone had a hype right on their first album, but it wasn't like they weren't you know, like a household name in a sense, the metal scene, I guess how about you've been to talk to Holocaust. Now, even if the people I don't like them, everybody knows who the fuck they are. Right. Um, I, but be cool. Like I say, like I was there whenever Evil never guys came out. I remember when uh, Midnight and their fucking uh, Seven Inch came out, that all black one, the Endless Sluts, that came out and just kind of like, oh, who's this band? And oh, cool. But didn't think mu- a whole lot of it. Didn't think it was going to be some popular band. Just like, oh, a band that kind of sounds like Venom. Yeah, cool. It's pretty cool. Look, oh, they're from Cleveland. Oh, cool. Just kind of left that. That kind of forgot about it. Like put in the Seven Inch box, right? Bought it and that was it. But uh, so yeah, if you want to be kind of part of the cool club, like get in now and like, fuck yeah. Get to know it before they uh, become popular and like they're playing goddamn stadiums, right? Not, not that I think they'll get to that level, but I just think that they're going to be kind of a, I just have a prediction that they're going to be kind of a, um, just well known in the underground and people like it because just kind of how it's already moving for first coming out because this is just their first album they ever did. They just had that in the demo. And actually, we bought, I bought a bunch of, um, for Hell's, a bunch of the demo tapes off of, uh, Dick at the show. So we'll, uh, just at wholesale. And then we'll sell them on our site. So they'll probably be up by the time you see this video, a couple weeks or so. Just keep an eye out for those if you want the demo tape as well. And that's all they have, just one demo. And this album, it came out about, we put this disc out, I think we got them in like four to six weeks ago, somewhere around there. So still very recent. But um, yeah, I think it's great. I thought they were extremely good live. Actually look fucking metal. No stupid ass fucking sports jerseys, backwards hats, ba- baggy blue jeans. No, no, no fucking silly ass nonsense. Just look very like, like I guess, kind of like, almost like what Slayer Show No Mercy looks like, with the, with more of like black metal image kind of look. That's kind of best way I can describe it. So like '80s with black metal, and then musically, I think it's another reason why I just have a, a strong feeling that a lot of people are going to like them and appeal to them. Is because it kind of they're a band that can easily cross uh, over to different fan bases. Because the best way I can describe the music is like is black and punk thrash. It's got a little bit of that vocally and stuff. It's kind of black metal, but not like pure like dark funeral. And it's definitely got punk riffs and thrash riffs. So that's, yeah, black and punk thrash, the best way I can fucking describe it. Um, you know, that's not, not fucking very overly produced. The, the bass is fucking loud as shit, you know, kind of like, just kind of like, you know, old school, you know, old school and underground sound. And, and uh, yeah, really cool, memorable songs. And uh, the, the show, just the tons of energy, very good, uh, just just a stage presence. Uh, Dick says cool shit in between songs. They checked every fucking box. They're pro- they're one of the most entertaining live bands I've seen in quite some fucking time. You know, not just some fucking idiots up there shaking their hair around and just stand there. Like I told you, no names mentioned. I was at uh, a show of one of the openers, which I never, I, I heard of the name, but I didn't know who they were. And it's just literally three guys standing. They weren't even fucking headbanging. Just three guys standing there. It was, it was a death metal band, newer death metal band. Uh, I'm not going to mention names because I don't want to get any pussies to get up in a bunch. I'm just like, why am I watching this? I'm not at your fucking rehearsal, bro. This is supposed to be a show. I just throw that out there because people kind of ask. That's been one of the questions if you go on past videos. Like, uh, yeah, what do you think for um, bands should look or and how their stuff for shows? Should they have be theater, theatrical? Shout out to whoever asked that, but I answered that, and you, you know who you are. It's been kind of kind of asked to in a degree in different ways, way, ways about same type of fucking question. So yeah, no, go see Spider if they fucking play your goddamn town. Them, that's that's what a fucking metal band should look like. That's what commentary between songs should fucking be and um and just yeah just really really good energy so highly highly fucking recommend them i actually think i'd go on record as saying we're halfway through 2022 as far as releases that came out this year in 2022 i think this is my fucking favorite album trying to think what else that came out in 2022 that would be because i mean um we just got the shed the skin cds into i really liked that uh i thought that was a really really good album so that's a recent to 2022 uh, the Church of Disgust, we got those in. That was that was a really good album. 
Uh, so it's 2022. What else? I don't think a big. Oh, I haven't heard of to the fence. I have not heard the new to, to date. Haven't heard the new immolation yet. At this point, I don't know. I think Chase said that we got some on order or whatever. But at this point, I'm probably fine if there's a limited color or something to buy it at fucking eBay Discogs or whatever. Just so that way, I have at least a rare colored vinyl. Uh, so I haven't. So I might, that might have a beak. So I, I will admit I have not heard that yet. But that's a two, 2022 release by a band obviously I'm a big fan of. But I'm kind of drawing a blank so far of everything that I've heard in 2022. Yeah, so far, I would say this is my favorite fucking release. So I would highly recommend checking them out. There's, like I said, there's a very good likelihood that you're probably going to like. The only people that probably wouldn't be into them is you're for one of the guys you're only really into like uh, like 90s death metal, the gore grind, the really, really brutal shit. If that's pretty much all you like and you don't like much traditional metal, you don't much like much black metal, and you think punk completely sucks fucking absolute shit, if that's your opinion, then, then yeah, you probably won't like them. Then they're probably not for you. But if you're yeah, if you kind of like across the board, um, and if you do like bands like Midnight and, and shit like that, where it's kind of like same thing, they're in the same category. They appeal to like punks and metal, toxicologs and other bands. Not saying I'm not saying Spider sounds like those bands. I'm just saying it fan base wise, it's it's in that crossover area to where it appeals to different you know fan bases. Same kind of fucking thing. That if you do like that stuff, yeah, I would, I would highly highly fucking recommend picking them up because there's a good chance you're like, holy fuck, this is my favorite. Favorite release in the last two years or so. Would not be the least bit surprised. So, uh, yeah, check out the fucking spider, goddammit. And then, since we got a little bit of time left, let's answer some goddamn questions. And the ones we're on, I pulled up one question I didn't see. It's on the wife does the asking best metal side projects. This is looked like the first video Lindsay's on. And I know she did pull this video up and did some of the questions off it. But uh, as I was looking at it now, as the next video online. It was three weeks ago now. It's uh, 150 fucking comments. I'm like, she didn't read off that many. I was like, so there had to be more in the days. Because when we were, when she read off this, this is already a week ago when we did that video. Because she just, it was like the newest video online. She said, well, I'm on it, so I'll just read these ones off. I was, all right, I'll just have to remember what, like, when I get to that video. But uh, first guy in line, Coward House Satan. He had a couple questions in here, and I did not recognize them. So I'm like, yeah, pretty sure Lindsay didn't ask these. Or maybe, maybe they weren't in there yet at the time when we uh, did that video. So. No further fucking ado. Here's what he had to say. Sup, J Dog and L Dog. Love that you did this with Wifey on, on shovel duties for the goddamn devil questions, Dick. And definitely a great idea. Two questions for you. That's what I'm here for, brah, brah. One, what would it take for you to be completely put off of a favorite band for good? Into so that first, um, pulling a Metallica, uh, just, or, or just in general, pulling a really, really shitty album. Where it's like, who's an example? Like, obviously, Metallica is a huge, perfect example, but a uh, band that, like, I'm trying to think, it was way more of a death metal band that really put out a really fucking shitty album. I don't want to use Tiamat as an example or something because they kind of like disbanded really early, like, as far as changing. Like, who's a band that had like four good albums and the fifth one? You're like, what the fuck is this? Carcass would be a really good example, but at the same time, I kind of don't like to use them because I, I actually do like Heartwork and Swanson, but definitely should have changed their name because they're drastically different. Let's go with, let's go with like Entomb then because I like the first two albums and I love the, the Nihilist and Tomb demo, demos. Basically, even if I like, let's say with the Wolverine Blues, which I did think that album sucked, maybe by the one after that, that was complete fucking garbage, then that, I'm like, it, I was just like, I'm not. I just figured the band's done in my mind as far as what I like, so I wouldn't check anything further out by them. It'd have to be that. Uh, and he says, uh, for example, big change in style. So, yeah, that would be it. Ripping off fans, abuse, murder, etc. Uh, the other things, yeah, no, I don't discredit bands when I hear things that come out to them with, like, if they're a murder, if they're a fucking whatever, uh, commit whatever type of crimes, because I, I can separate personal from music. I mean, the way I see it is, I'm, I guarantee there's a ton of bands that I like that the actual members themselves, I meet them, and I'm like, I wouldn't hang out with this guy in a million fucking years. Like, I don't like him on a personal level. Uh, there's actually bands I know that I have met, and I believe names anonymous, don't like the people at all in the band. At all, like, at all. And uh, But I like the music a lot. So I can, I can always separate that. I never I never understood that. I'd be like, yeah, I don't like the guys. He's a fucking dick. What, what is this, a personality contest? Or are you into music? Like, um, that's what the fuck. I don't give a shit about that. That's like saying if you see a painting and you're like, man, that artwork's so fucking awesome. And then you find out the fucking, uh, the, um, the painter fucking, you know, killed his family with an axe or something. Yeah, it's fucked up. Like, oh, wow, well, I guess he goes, goes to prison. But I was like, you don't, do you just not like the painting no more? Throw in the garbage? I, I personally want it. So I separate the art from the person, personally. And I have no problem doing that. So yeah, that wouldn't affect it whatsoever. 
Uh, number two, does knowing members or finding out too much about a band make them less exciting or more appealing for you? Cheers, and thanks for answering my five questions recently. Oh, yes, five of you ladies. God Goddamn, you must have had some pretty good ones on. Um, knowing too much about the band is less appealing? No, but I kind of do like, for certain bands, I do kind of like the mysterious factor, like kind of like Corathon for Bathory. Obviously, I never met them. It just, it's, 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 um, I just find it interesting. Um, Holocaust from Beharitz. Uh, Wagner Antichrist and Sarcophago. Not that he's mysterious. I just kind of always, but I'm always just looking at NRI. I, I, I kind of almost recant that when I look at later albums like Laws of Scourge and shit, which actually, by the way, uh, Laws of Scourge, I actually think that's a pretty good record. It's just another band that you should have changed your names, brah, brah. But every time I put it on, I'm like, this is actually a pretty good fucking record, like a pretty just good kind of like kind of a commercial metal record. But um, thought it was a pretty solid album, but it just, it doesn't sound like, it's like, what the fuck, man? There's nothing like NRI. Their image is totally different. But I don't know, yeah, just when I just look at INRI and just that, just how all the guys look so cool and it's like they sound like they're playing live shows all in the US and stuff. I just I've always kind of had like a mysterious thing that I always thought would cool almost to meet the guy, but almost kind of don't want to, because almost you don't want to change that. You meet him, you're like, oh fuck. He's like, especially now, like, yeah, he's nothing like what the fuck I was hoping. <laughs> you know what I mean? So kind of in that degree, but at the same time. No, nah, not so much, but I, I kind of like it when some some of it's mysterious, you know what I mean? I see a couple questions here. Yeah, that L Doug did ask. I said I remember those. I'm gonna skip over them. <laughs> this is a pretty good one, actually, even though it's kind of like uh sounds stupid, but I've always thought this since I was a uh, I remember actually me, Eric, and Chase always thought this when we were uh, teenagers and shit. So I will answer it. No one's actually brought it up. Mizothea six six six. Definitely cool to have a variety of interaction patterns. So the missus is a more than welcome addition. From time to time. Question. Worst logo change. I nominate Immolation. <laughs> Going from a cool death metal logo to some boring ass typeface is something I could never wrap my head around. That's why I think it's funny you bring that up. Because literally uh, the two main candidates that me, Eric, and Chase always said, like, what, what the fuck? Why are they doing that? Why are you using that logo? Why are they change that? Why do they think it's a good idea? Was literally Immolation and Dying Fetus. Those were the two number ones, and there's definitely others. I'm drawing a blank. But for sure, looking around for any examples in case I'm seeing any, uh, those were for sure the two that I'm like, what, what the fuck are you doing? Obviously, I prefer the old Cannibal Corpse logo over the new Cannibal Corpse logo, but I didn't think it was absurd, and I at least know the reasoning. You know, it separates the Barnes there from the Corpse Grinder, so I kind of actually do like that. It's kind of like, I don't know, um, almost, I don't know, it just kind of made sense. It's kind of kept it a little bit separate, so uh, that at least made sense, but I do prefer the old logo. It wasn't, like, absurd, like, yeah, exactly, Immolation, the logo was pretty, pretty fucking cool. I mean, it's not my favorite logo, but pretty cool logo. And then just go to a font type, like, why, why the fuck would you think that's a good idea? Uh, who else did do that? I guess, honestly, it doesn't even matter who the fuck else did it. Anyone in that category, but it was definitely Immolation Dying Phoenix. We always said that. And, uh, fucking stupid, like, why would you do that? I agree. I have no idea. I don't like, uh, chuck an album in the trash over it. Like, for example, like the first album they did that on Immolation was just on the third album, um, Failures for Gods. Uh, the logo's crap on the cover, but that's, I mean, I absolutely love that fucking record. Um, the songs Once Ordained and No Jesus, No Beast are some of, fuck, probably some of my favorite death metal songs of all time. I mean, definitely in the top 50 or so. So, great album. But yeah, never, never knew why anyone thought that was a good idea. That guy needed to be fired. Squeeze one more question in here. If there's if there's one that hasn't been asked in this video, should find. Like I said, there's 150 fucking comments. There's got to be something in here. God damn it. <laughs> Music video questions. I answered that. So I told you guys I remember most of these for the most part. Remember I told you when I get back to these videos, it's the first one when I go to the backlog. Whoever the regular devils picks up on that, if you remember me saying that. Uh, I didn't think we talked about, but Ben NG, is there a metal band your wife loves that you think stinks? Just, I'm sure you've seen by now. Keep watching. She, obviously, you mentioned bands she likes that yeah, I'm not a fan of. So, yes. Uh, most hated band. <laughs> I remember asking that. Oh. Uh, 
<laughs> it's just a comment here. <laughs> I didn't see any comments. I didn't pre-read them. Like, uh, uh, Chris G. horrifically gay sent, sent me out of my fucking chair. Laughed my ass off. Should have saved that one for death. <laughs> like that one, huh, Rara? Horrifically gay, huh? Uh, Life Eternal asking about country have the best black metal band. I think I answered that right, didn't I? Did I? I'm pretty sure I said Sweden. Probably would I go off outside my head. At least for myself. I mean, I know it'd be Sweden, or obviously a lot of people are going to say Norway too. But for me, I think I like the most bands from Sweden. You know, Bathory, Marty, Dark Funeral. You know what I mean? Oh, well, this guy's being a smart guy. Dave, David Lane, do you eat meat? And then he's <laughs> talking about driving axes and shit, eating cars. Obviously, obviously, I eat meat. I think it's. To be pretty abundant at this point if you watch all my videos. What you just being sarcastic ass? Here's one. Uh, Chad Apple. Uh, hey, J Dog and Wifey. Favorite Ghoul album? I think we answered that one. And thing is, I don't know. I, I uh, again, kind of talking back about Spider. Same thing with uh, Ghoul. I remember I first heard um, uh, Ghoul. We came for the dead. So that probably is my favorite just because I heard it when it first came out. I believe it was a Medic Records that did the vinyl version. That's what I had was the um, the first pressing. Uh, I believe it's a Medic Records. I'm almost positive. Uh, Steve Steve, uh, Steve Rarick over there, kind of like, you know, I don't want to say we're friends, but we're kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I met him. I know. I wouldn't go as far as saying we're friends. You probably watch this. What the fuck? I barely know this motherfucker. Don't remember that guy. <laughs> but, you know, met him. Cool guy. Very friendly guy. And I remember he started a little bit before us. We asked him some actual distro type questions and shit like that right around when Hells was starting. Like, kind of like, um, I remember he was selling the um, Cannibal Corpse uh, Worm Infested mini CD when it first came out. Like, and I, we were questioning about, like, how do you get Metal Blade titles or who's the best contact? Little questions like that were new. Like, like, I don't know, whatever year that came out. I was, uh, that was around, around Gore Obsessed. So I was probably like 18 or so. So we were doing the business, but I'm like, kind of weren't dealing with a lot of the big boys yet. So I remember kind of asking that type of shit. But, anyways, uh, he did the, that was what I got, was just the vinyl version. I had the CD, Ghoul, We Came for the Dead. And I like, Kind of like with this, like Spider, like I said, like I didn't know that they're gonna blow up or nothing. I kind of wasn't surprised though, because I just thought they were so good. Like I love, I absolutely loved that record, kid. And I just played it over and over. I played it literally every week for probably a few months straight, at least once a week. And uh, I loved the image. It looked like, uh, kind of like old school, I guess, hillbilly Ku Klux Klan, but not racist type shit. Because I was big be ghouls, like, but just with the blood on them and like, and just like they had, they had the, they had the, um. Uh, fucking tools and shit. Just, it just looked really, really cool. And it was like they had the carcass pitch shifting vocals apart, but it wasn't like carcass worship. And like the carcass Jeff Walker vocals too. But the riffs were kind of like more around like Anthrax, Megadeth, but more down tune. It was just like this is fucking great. Like nobody else was really doing it. Like you know, I mean, there was kind of other bands that influenced that style on the, the whole Razorback. But uh, I don't know. Gold just really, really stood out. So probably. Probably we came for the dead, but he had so cool because I mean I, I enjoy Maniac so much and Splatter Thrash. Uh the last album, Dungeon Master, is definitely my least favorite. I like it. I own every single album by them, but that one is for sure my least favorite. Uh with, without a doubt. Uh but all the rest, yeah, I like them all. Transmission Zero is good. Uh but yeah, probably We Came for the Dead is is probably my favorite. But because the first one I heard and just blown away and Again, I was there, kind of just like I said, it'd be cool for you guys being there, like when, when Spider, brand new album, picked it up when it was new, like, so t 10 years from now, and they're fucking five albums in, and everybody in the scene knows who they are, like Toxic Holocaust, like, I was fucking there. Don't say I didn't won't tell you so. <laughs> so, that's it for this one, Devils. A little bit of fucking show and tell for you, a little bit of goddamn recommendations, and some questions and answers. Questions, comments, concerns, and let me know what the fuck you think of Spider. If you check them out, check them on YouTube, go to Hell's, go get it, whatever the fuck you want to do. Let me know what you fucking think of them. You heard them. And if they tour your fucking town, definitely go fucking see them because Dick told me they're going to be doing a tour in a couple uh, a couple months or so. I uh, thought they were awesome as fuck live. So if nothing else, go fucking check out the show. And that's it for this one, Devils. See you in the next one. Later, goddammit.